In the last five years, Human Rights Watch has published three reports on abuses suffered by farm workers, focusing particularly on women and children. I'm the author of the 2012 report on, the, on farm worker women and girls and the high risk they face of sexual violence and harassment at work. Uh, I'm going to start by showing a short clip from a video we made to accompany the report because I think the women in the video tell in their own words so much better than I ever could uh, the challenges that they face. Hundreds of thousands of farm worker women and girls in the U.S. today who are working in the fields and packing houses, growing the food that Americans eat, uh, face a serious and significant risk of sexual violence and harassment at work. Yo he estado este um, en el trabajo con una persona, con, especialmente con un hombre que es legal, que por muchas razones uh, no lo puedo denunciar, precisamente porque él es legal y yo ilegal. Tengo miedo de eso, eh, que las leyes favorezcan a él por ser legal y Y tampoco puedo pedir ayuda a la policía porque la policía um, lo que va a hacer es entregarme con migración. Entonces yo tengo que callar aunque esa persona me siga molestando en el trabajo. Cuando tú llegas y das una queja al policía, el policía lo primero que te pregunta, ¿tienes documentos? Entonces uno, ese es el miedo. As you saw in this, this video, uh, these two women who I met in upstate New York, they've been doing farm work in multiple states, but work primarily in New York now. Um, they describe what it's like to suffer sexual harassment at work and the barriers they face to reporting these abuses. Um, I can't overstate the amount of fear I saw when I was visiting um, people uh, in this rural part of New, uh, New York, very close to the border. Um, they, we would come up to a house to interview people. The curtains would be drawn, the door would be shut. Um, the farm worker advocate I was with, who knows these women very well, would have to bang on the door multiple times and say, it's me, it's not the police. Um, they had known that we were coming, but there was often some period of silence. She would have to knock multiple times before they would open the door. Um, the woman whose face is obscured is also a sexual violence survivor. Um, a coworker had raped her at work, um, and she was unable to get any help. Uh, when she called the police, they didn't do anything, which is why she's particularly reluctant in this video when she talks about a, a different coworker who's now sexually harassing her. Um, there's a reason why the U.S. program at Human Rights Watch has published three reports on farm workers in the U.S. in the past five years. Um, at the last Universal Periodic Review, several of the recommendations made to the U.S. were about migrant workers and specifically agricultural workers. Uh, Canada, for example, said, uh, ensure protection against exploitation and forced labor for all categories of workers, including farm and domestic workers, through such measures as a review of appropriate labor regulations. Um, the Holy See, uh, focus in particular in the use of child laborers, which I'll discuss further as well. Um, our culture is a striking illustration of how much we in the U.S. rely on immigrant workers. The vast majority of farm workers are foreign born. By official Department of Labor estimate, about 50% are undocumented. But a head of a grower association in California told me that in his experience, the number is probably closer to 80 or 90%. Um, I'm going to pause a little bit so that I can sink in. That means every one of us in this room has eaten food that was grown, picked, packed, harvested by someone who is undocumented. Um, and a growing percentage of these farm workers are women and girls, about 24%. The abuses suffered by farm workers are numerous and severe. They are extremely poor. Uh, average annual income is about $16,000. Women report even lower wages, around $11,000. Um, although there are federal and state regulations around conditions of work, such as regarding the availability of water and bathrooms, uh, many women describe to me violations, multiple levels, and few inspectors um, are really making sure these regulations are being enforced at the federal or state level. Uh, wage theft is frequent. Many do not even get paid a minimum wage. Um, and as this report focused, uh, on this women and girls um, regularly experience sexual harassment work, ranging from verbal abuse, inappropriate touching, groping, to sexual assault. Um, child labor is not only common, it's completely legal. Um, US law allows children who aren't old enough to buy cigarettes to work in tobacco fields, and they frequently uh, report symptoms that are quite similar to tobacco, to nicotine poisoning. Um, it's appalling that the people who grow the food we eat 
work in such an environment of impunity. Um, all workers, regardless of immigration status, should be protected under labor laws. Um, all workers, regardless of immigration status, should be able to seek justice when they are victims of labor violations. Uh, even if your primary concern is American workers, you should care how immigrant workers are treated because no employer should have an incentive um, to hire undocumented workers because they can easily exploit them. Um, the U.S. government has obligations under several international treaties to protect uh, immigrant workers. Um, and I can reel off the acronyms. Um, some of them we've actually ratified, uh, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, um, an ILO convention uh, concerning the prohibition and immediate elimination of the worst forms of child labor, uh, and the Commission to Eliminate All Forms of Racial Discrimination, which Katrina mentioned as well. Um, there are conventions that, we have, that we've signed but haven't ratified. Um, one of the most striking examples is the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Um, we, along with Somalia and South Sudan, are the only countries that have not ratified this convention. Um, there's a lot of reasons why farm workers face um, sexual harassment, sexual violence at work, and other abuses. But there's really two main ways that we think the U.S. is failing to meet its international obligations under these treaties. Um, first, many of our most bedrock, most fundamental labor protections just exclude farm workers outright. Um, the Fair Labor Standards Act, which sets minimum wage, that uh, sets overtime provisions that we all know, you know, you work more than eight hours, you get paid one time and a half, um, excludes farm workers. This is a legacy of the deal that uh, FDR made um, to get Southern uh, uh, legislators on board. Um, so now, even now, how many years later, um, the Fair Labor Standards Act uh, excludes farm workers. They're exempt from overtime provisions, and minimum wage uh, provisions don't apply if they work on small farms. The provisions of the FLSA that regulate child workers make a glaring exception for child farm workers. Uh, the minimum wage that applies in all other industries does not apply in agriculture. Children as young as 12 can work unlimited hours outside of school on a farm of any size, and there's no minimum wage to work on small farms. I have a colleague who, in writing a report on child labor and culture, interviewed children uh, as young as five who were picking blueberries. Um, outside of agriculture, the minimum age for hazardous work is 18. Agriculture, the minimum wage is 16. Um, and more children die in agriculture than in any other industry. The National Labor Relations Act also does not protect farm workers' right to collective bargaining. So we basically tell farm workers um, that they don't deserve the same protections as workers in nearly every other industry. Uh, second, um, even where U.S. labor protections do apply to all workers, undocumented or not, uh, it fails to make the remedies truly available. Um, as you saw in the video, even where immigrant workers are victims of serious crimes, they often don't see the police as a source of help. Um, you know, this is generally true. You know, a lot of times immigrants are afraid of the police. Um, but their fear has been exacerbated in recent years by immigration policies at the federal and state level. Um, state laws, like those passed by Arizona and Alabama, explicitly required local police to investigate immigration status. Um, they've largely been struck down by Supreme Court. But, you know, again, I can't overemphasize the impact that it had on people. When I interviewed people in Alabama soon after HB 56 passed, um, I had a woman tell me that her friend had been robbed and beaten, um, and, and these good Samaritans actually come out and brought him into their home and cleaned him up, and they want to take him to the hospital and call the police. And he said, no, please do not call. Um, and programs expanded and implemented by the Obama administration have had much of the same effect. Um, programs like Secure Communities, which links local law enforcement to federal uh, immigration enforcement, have really fed immigrants' fears that um, when they call the police, um, they are not going to get help, um, but they are going to, to get deported. Um, in November, President Obama announced he was ending Secure Communities and implementing a new program called the Prioritized Enforcement Program. Um, but this program is in many ways uh, similar to the old one. And I think one thing you really have to keep in mind is, you know, the farm workers I talked to didn't say, oh, I'm afraid because of secure communities. It's not the name of the program. It's not the program's um, existence that's causing the fear. It's what they see every day. They see that 
of uh, someone they know is stopped by the police for broken taillight and he gets deported. Um, that, has, that has to end. We cannot have, um, police have to be in the business of public safety and they can't do that um, when immigrants are afraid to call the police to report crimes. So um, there's many things that Congress could do, um, many things that you know, we know quite realistically are not quite possible right now given the political climate. But, um, you know, I think one thing to really remember is that to, in some ways it's not, it's not such uh, revolutionary ideas. To think that farm workers should be protected the same way as other workers, that shouldn't be a controversial thing. Um, the minimum wage for work in agriculture should be the same as it is for other industries. Um, there's actually a bill um, introduced by uh, Cicilline and Durbin, the Children Don't Belong in Tobacco Fields Act, uh, which would narrowly prohibit children um, from working, um, do, doing work that brings them into direct contact with tobacco. Um, Congress <coughs> in 2000 created something called the U visa to address specifically the problem of immigrants who are afraid to report crimes. It basically gives um, undocumented workers who cooperate with, who are victims of serious crimes, who cooperate in the law enforcement investigation temporary status, and it's supposed to be a law enforcement tool. Um, there are 10,000 visas every year, every year for the last six years that cap has been reached. Um, during the last VAWA reauthorization debate in 2012, um, it became, th the bill actually didn't even really increase the number. It said, let's use the old visas before the cap was reached, let's recapture those visas. It was such a modest modest uh, request to increase the number of visas available. It became hugely controversial. Um, and again, this should not be a controversial issue. Um, when victims of crimes, regardless of status, are able to speak out and call the police, that's good for the public safety of everyone. It's not just about immigrants. Um, workers who experience workplace violations, as you saw, face so many barriers to reporting. Um, limited access to legal services, um, transportation, a lot of the issues that Katrina mentioned, you know, these same barriers exist for people who suffer workplace violations. Um, the Senate immigration bill um, made U, U visas available for those who experience workplace violations, and we think that would be another way to say that um, we think all workers should be protected under U.S. labor laws. Um, you know, Jamil mentioned that um, the U.S. has a role to play, really, in, in being a leader that we, we can set, um, but we don't want to be setting precedent for bad policies, and we certainly um, spend, you know, when we criticize other countries, we want to set a good example. Um, at Human Rights Watch, we issue reports on a, a lot of different countries, and regularly, countries will say to us, well, why don't you criticize the U.S.? You know, they're doing horrible things, and it's really important to our credibility as an organization that we can say, we do. We have an entire U.S. program, we issue many reports um, pointing out the ways in which the U.S. fails to meet its international obligations. Um, that's just for us as an organization. Um, I do really think that um, for the U.S. to take a, to truly be a leader, it needs to show that it takes these obligations very seriously at home. Thank you.